against Mr. Fly here. Hope you're well. Now, I've owned the trusty Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 for about a year now. Uh, I've got to know the machine pretty well, and in the main, I absolutely love it. But there are a few things about the bike that are absolutely pants. So uh, in this video, I'm going to give you the top five things that I hate about the Royal Enfield Interceptor. So if you're interested in this machine, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so before we get into this, time to put my old cards on the table. I absolutely love the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. It's great, and uh, the things that I'm going to go through in this video, uh, really, they're kind of gripes, they're minor annoyances, they're absolutely in no way showstoppers. If they were, I wouldn't have bought the bike. All right, let's crack on. Okay, so to number five on my list of things that I hate about the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, and uh, the first thing, it, or number five on the list, reverse order and all that, is this, the use of plastic for things like the indicators and the mud guards. Now, they're kind of in keeping with the bike, but it's a bit like, uh, you know, the walnut dash that you get in the old uh, 1980s car. It looks fantastic, but when you tap it, it turns out to be plastic with a bit of printing on it. Well, these are the same. They look kind of, uh, you know, normal, like they should, like they did in a period, but these, uh, they look like they're chrome, but actually they're plastic. Same thing with the mud guards plastic and it's not just the back uh, the front one's the same it looks all right it's pretty functional but when you tap it it's plastic uh, i've got a triumph speed twin as well the mud guards and uh, stuff on that are all metal they're much better they're just higher quality so uh, you know that's number five on the list the use of plastics where you think it should be metal Okay, so to number four of the things that I hate about the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, and this one I suppose is a little bit more serious, and that is to do with the engine, specifically the service intervals. The service intervals on this bike, after you've done the running in check, uh, are every 3,000 miles, that for these days is a pretty low service interval. Again, for comparison, my Speed Twin, that's got service intervals of 10,000 miles, so 3,000 miles is pretty miserly. Uh, not only that, you have to do valve clearance checks, I think every other service on this as well, which is quite a fiddly thing to do. So, uh, you know, an oil change or whatever, you can do yourself, but valve clearances, uh, that's not for me. So I have to take it to a dealer to get that done. So yeah, that's a bit naff, 3,000 miles for, uh, for every service on the, uh, on the Interceptor. Thumbs down. Okay, so number three on my list of whinges about the Royal Enfield Interceptor, and that is this, this seam on the fuel tank here. Look, there's a seam all the way along here, along the bottom. Now what I've done is put some black insulation tape on there to try and uh, cover it up and make it sort of blend into the frame a bit, and it works quite well. And in fact, this is something that has in common with my Speed Twin, because I've had to do the same on that as well. That's also got a bit of black tape running along the bottom. Now, in the olden days, in the 50s and 60s, they managed to make motorcycles that had completely clean fuel tanks without that seam. Why can't we do that today? So that's number three on my list of five things I hate about the Royal Enfield Interceptor. Okay, so to number two of the things that uh, I hate about the Royal Enfield Interceptor, this one's slightly more uh, important perhaps, and that's to do with some corrosion that I've noticed, or the starts of some corrosion, on the engine cases. Now I have, uh, unfortunately, I polished, I had a go polishing these out the other day, I got the mechanical polisher on the engine cases, so there's not much left, but let me show you a bit more close up. Uh, just along the edges here, I don't know if you can just see there, there was a little bit of uh, furring on the chrome there, where it joined the other metal, and around the side here, I don't know if you can see that close up, and then things like the fasteners look, definitely some uh, white signs of dusty corrosion coming on what I assume is uh, cast uh, aluminium there, polished. Uh, so that's a bit of a worry. Uh, I just don't know what the long-term durability is going to be of the fit and finish on the bike. It's not like I've ridden this bike much in wet weather, if at all. I've only done about 700 miles on it since I've had it, I regret to say. Uh, it's been in the garage and I ACF fitted it for winter. So, uh, you know, it's had every right to stay spangly and new, but there is a little bit of corrosion sign showing on there. So the jury's out on that and that's a little bit more serious. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so to number one on my list of the top five things I hate about the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, and that is this here, the rear light and the indicators. Now they're perfectly functional, uh, and they're sort of in keeping with the bike look of the sort of uh, 70s and 80s, if you like. They did look like this, but uh, I just don't think it looks the best. It's kind of like, you know, if Kate Beckinsale went camping, uh, then uh, she might wear a pair of Crocs, but let's face it, a nice pair of Louboutins would be much more preferable, wouldn't they? Now I don't suppose for one minute Kate Beckinsale goes camping, and nor should she. But uh, at the same time, they made a bike here that, uh, you know, I love with my heart. Uh, and this is just one thing that puts me off. They could have easily put a neater rear light on here. Now I did try replacing this a while back with, an, with another rear light that I bought and indicators, but the wiring was so difficult to get at and it just got so complicated, I ended up giving up, never made the film. So I'm gonna have to leave that to the professionals, but uh, you know, okay, maybe I've got my ordering wrong. Maybe it's not uh, the number one thing on the list, but uh, it's just something that annoys me. This is one fugly rear end in terms of the lighting arrangements. I don't know if you agree or disagree. You may disagree with my ordering, but uh, there we go. It's just a video, don't get too hung up on it. Okay, so don't get me wrong, as I said at the beginning of the video, I absolutely love my Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, I don't hate it at all. 
All these little gripes that I've highlighted are things that uh, are either easily sorted or I can live with clearly, otherwise I wouldn't have bought the bike. Um, it's a brilliant bike to own, it's lovely to ride, it sounds lovely, it looks gorgeous, it's economic to run, it's relatively cheap to buy, I think it's a brilliant bike, and in my case it's an absolute keeper. If you've got one of these, I'll be very interested to uh, see if you agree with my gripes about the bike or if you've got any other ones that you'd like to add. If so, do stick them in the comments below. So if you're interested in the Royal Enfield Interceptor, there are loads more videos here on my channel about the bike. Do go and check out my um, playlist on uh, living with the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Loads of videos there. Keep you busy for absolutely ages. Okay, so that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed uh, that little video. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. I'm pleased to report no animals were harmed during the making of this video, but... I did eat almost a whole packet of chocolate obnobs during the making of it. Does that make me a bad person? Okay, so to number four on my list of the things that I hate about the uh, speed twit. Ooh, let's do that again. Okay, so to number one of the, the, on my list, let's do that again. In the end, I stuck everything back on and I never made the video, so I'm going to have to leave that to the pro professionals at some time. <laughs> New teeth in. Okay, so as I said at the beginning of the video, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Royal Enfield Interceptor. It's a beautiful bike to look at, to ride. It sounds great. It's uh, economic to buy, uh, or rather it's good. For oh, let's do it again. Sorry, one for the outro at the end. Do it again.